Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Good afternoon and welcome to Pacific Partnerships in Education. I'm your host, Ethan Allen, here in Think Tech Hawaii studios. Uh, Pacific Partnerships is all about all the great educational work that's being done all across the Pacific or around education. Education in the broadest possible sense. Formal, informal learning, science, art, technology, language, all these great things. And I have two really wonderful guests in the studio today to talk with me. Uh, Dr. Sam Nofziger of the English, La English Learner Group. Yes. Welcome, Sam. Yes. And my colleague, Dr. Lori Phillips. Welcome, Lori. Uh, Lori and I are colleagues at Prell. And uh, both of them are involved in a whole big pro well, set of projects uh, involving English language learners. Yeah. The whole issue here in Hawaii of a lot of kids coming into our school systems at various levels mm -hmm. who are not native English speakers, mm -hmm. who may have spoken very, very little English ever mm -hmm. indeed. And obviously that's a problem, right? Yeah, it sure is. So why don't you just sort of fra frame that a little bit for us? And, and I think I think probably the better word is it's, it's a challenge for teachers. It's right. a challenge to make sure that their instruction is appropriate for all the students that they have in their class. Um, we've learned about 10 or a little bit more than 10 percent of the population of students in Hawaii um, speak another language at home. Oh and while speaking another language at home are limited in their English proficiency. Mm -hmm. So Hawaii has a, a system in place that assesses children's language proficiency because certainly you can speak another language at home while still being fluent in English. There are people who speak so, four or five languages absolutely, fluently, right? Absolutely. So when, when uh, the schools find out through the, um, the forms that the parents fill out uh, when they enroll their students that the student's first language is not English, um, we want to make we want to see how much English they know. Sure. So they assess them for that to see to see to what level they learning uh, they have learned English over the years, and then that information is of course given to the teacher so that the teacher can make the best instructional decisions. Right. For right. them. Because so. it's really important that you match. Uh, reading materials, mm -hmm. conversational expectations, uh, all Absolutely. these kind of things, right? With, with the kids' comfortability, you always want to be pushing them a little bit to yeah. keep learning English better. That's exactly but right. you can't expect a first grader to be, to be dropped in if he's never heard English before and be on a mm -hmm. par with his native English-speaking peers, right, in terms of English language Exactly. Skills. We had a, a, actually a really good conversation about that today with a group of teachers. We were talking about the need for our students to be able to talk academically mm -hmm. in English and to be able to write academically in English. And we had a pretty good conversation with teachers in specific grade level groups, like mm -hmm. the lower level elementary teachers were together and the higher level elementary teachers were together. And they had a conversation about what that would look like. Like what is their expectation of English, academic English, speaking and writing with say a kindergarten student and how is that different than with a student who might be in sixth grade. Beautiful. So. Yeah, and, and this gets, it, it goes into other areas too uh, mm -hmm. because you got, for instance, your specialty is more art, right? Mm -hmm. but, but it means nothing really to some extent their understanding unless they can communicate some understanding, right? Mm -hmm. Unless they can talk about the art, tell them what it is they like or don't like about it right. or think is pretty special about it. Mm -hmm. Same with science. Right. And there's great evidence now that says the better your language skills are in, yes. uh, in English, for instance, the, the more understanding you'll get in an English science class, exactly right. art class, mm -hmm. et cetera, mm -hmm. right? It's a, it, it's a deeper level of knowledge of content. Right. Um, I oftentimes tell the story about how students can actually, for instance, do mathematics. Mm -hmm. They can add and subtract, say, um, a couple of two-digit numbers, like 27 plus 39. Mm -hmm. They can do that math on a piece of paper without actually saying a single word or writing a single word. Right. Well, our new standards in education say that they have to be able to express their understanding of that math. Wow. So they have to be able to explain it and or they have to be able to write that explanation. Mm -hmm. So just doing the math is no longer good enough. Mm -hmm. um, we, they just can't, they just can't understand. They have to be able to express that understanding. Yeah, that, that's fascinating because mm -hmm. math sometimes is referred to as a language itself, exactly. right? And you, you exactly. You talk literacy or numeracy, you know, mm -hmm. uh, and people have can have very deep understandings that's of right. math. Uh, 
but it, it, it is that communication skills really yes. lot, does lie at the heart of it. I used to joke with my uh, with a bunch of doctoral students who I was working with in the uh -huh. Center for Nanotechnology at the University mm -hmm. of Washington. I said, I don't care if you invent a perpetual motion machine in your garage. Uh -huh. If you cannot share that information, if you yes. cannot talk uh, about it in, yes. a, in a way, yeah. you haven't really advanced science at all. Yes, right? right? Well, even just a couple of months ago at our house, we had a accident where, not an accident, but something broke, a pipe broke in our house where we had to call a plumber. Well, the plumber came out and he did his work like plumbers have done before in our house. Uh -huh. But this time when he was finished, he took an iPad out of his um, out of his briefcase and he had to write and explain what he did and then write the parts that he used and why he used those parts and then he hit submit and all of that went to my email account went to his office's email account and it was it was the accountability of his work mm -hmm. instead of just the fact that it was um, it was fixed and everything's working well. Mm -hmm. He was, you know, his. It's a way that he, that he is held accountable mm -hmm. in this new technological literate society that we belong to. Sure. Our students have to be able to have those skills, even in areas of adult work that we never thought they would have to have those kinds of things. They still have to be able to do. Right, and, and more and more, we're also dealing with the, the so-called soft skills now. Right. We realize that kids have to be able to collaborate, to work, right. work together mm -hmm. on projects. Exactly. It's not enough to sit there and fill out a little test on your own. That's You've got to really exactly be able right. to say, mm -hmm. let's do this project, you're going to do this role, I'll do this role, you'll yes. do that role, and that takes communication skills. Exactly. And again, if, if I speak Chukis and you right. speak Mandarin and you speak only English, yeah. Yeah, that's going to be tough, right? You know, and that goes to the other kind of topic that we talked that we've been talking about, is the notion of the the cultural implications of that. Mm -hmm. um, our communication, um, whatever language we may speak, oftentimes reflects the culture from which we are. Right. Mm -hmm. And um, even across the United States, even though we speak English. Depending on the area of the country you live, it reflects a bit of a different culture. Right. Um, and so, so we did a lot of conversations, Lori mm -hmm. and I did, during the classes that we've been doing about the importance of taking this learning that students are doing and making mm -hmm. a connection to their culture yes. and mm -hmm. saying things like, um, you know, in this particular story, there's this character, and it's similar to this, or asking them to yeah. make those tell, kind tell of me, Tell me what yes. is the same yeah. in your family, in your community, in your culture. Right. Yes. Mm -hmm. And to some extent, that takes us into mm -hmm. some of these examples of exactly. artwork, right? Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. In, the, in the case of what's on the table, this is just out last week. And um, basically, some of the islands in Micronesia have 400 children. And let's say that you're looking at just what the six, five, and six-year-olds. That means there's only 72 right. on the whole island that right. speak Kosharian. Right. So the problem is they have no books because what publisher is going to write a book <laughs> for 42 kids in the whole world, right? Mm -hmm. So um, I had a thought lately. Well, what if we had the kids illustrate their own books and then write the early childhood readers? Let's say the teenagers. And in this case, these were done last oh, two weeks ago. And uh, the, I just went to Guam, and, and they did images of their island, things that were important to them. Right. And Tied it could be anything from right. coconut uh, candy is being made to, mm -hmm. to uh, a visit to Nam Mandal in Pohnpei. Mm -hmm. But you immediately have something that kids can connect to, and we get around the problem of being able to publish. So we will print these out put them on a website, and teachers from all over the world that need a Koshuayan book can, will be able to do that. Yeah, and this is becoming more and more important because, yes. for instance, there are now substantial Micronesian populations in places like Arkansas mm -hmm. and North mm -hmm. Carolina mm -hmm. right. and Oregon, mm -hmm. where the mm -hmm. teachers are, if anything, even less prepared than the Hawaiian teachers are, right? right. Hawaiian teachers right. at least have been dealing with a pretty diverse population. Right. Yes. But in Arkansas, right. when the first Marshallese showed up there, the, the teachers right. had no idea what to do, right? right? That's right. But now with something like this, they that's could right. pull up a book like this that's written in Marshallese right. and mm -hmm. right. 
then they can compare it with the, the other kids. The, Think of the difference, yeah. let's just say in California where Sam is, where um, when you talk ELL, you're talking Spanish. You know, mm -hmm. you're talk, and so many, I mean, books are written in Spanish, but mm -hmm. when you're talking about small island communities, right. um, not only is there light, they don't have zebras, so right. if you say the word zebra, they're not, right. and also mm -hmm. um, they just have so few people, and right. so few people that speak that language, and even if they do speak Yappies, there's like four or five different types of yappies, right. all different languages. Right. Mm -hmm. So this gives us a way to immediately have them translated into the language of that island, and then very easily just substitute the words out. Yeah, this is this yeah. is beautiful. Nice a nice use mm -hmm. of, of creative thinking and mm -hmm. art and, and technology mm -hmm. all sort of merging right. to, to, to be a solution for a, a, mm -hmm. an ongoing problem. Mm -hmm. And it's it's more of a problem, I guess, maybe in the Pacific Islands because. Yeah. There are, there's so many, there's yes. tw mm -hmm. 20, 25 different languages uh, mm -hmm. just in the U.S. affiliated Pacific right. Islands alone, mm -hmm. yeah. and they're all rather different from each other, and they're yes, completely mm -hmm. different from English, right? Yes. Whereas Spanish and English at least have come back to a common Absolutely. root, and you can, you can make some sense out of, mm -hmm. there's some cognates, right, that there are. kids mm -hmm. can really build on. You can actually, there's, there's so many that you can actually um, pretty easily identified what the cognate is, and if the student has an idea, a conceptual understanding of that mm. word, you don't really have to reteach the mm. concept, right. it's just a new label for that word. Right, mm. and here, so, for... That concept, yeah. Yeah, mm. for uh, yeah, it's more different. Ease, it's very it ha has nothing really in common with it's, English. It's very right. different. But what is interesting about books like this, and Lori and I were talking about it um, last week when she was showing me the books, is that when you start writing down um, these kinds of books where oftentimes they have patterns from, from picture to picture. Mm -hmm. It might say something like, um, maybe they're talking about a particular game that they play with their family or something. Mm -hmm. So it might say, I like this game, and then on the next page it says, I like this game, and the next page it says, I like this game. There are patterns that you can start identifying that you can really help kids to understand. I like, for instance, right. might be very similar from page to page. Right. So that mm. kids start seeing those patterns. Mm. And even though they're very different than what, what English would either sound like or look like, right. They start recognizing, goodness, this looks like. just like it's said mm -hmm. in the next page. Right. Mm. That kind of thing. So um, these books are examples of how um, that kind of pattern of language can really be um, acquired by students and done in a way that's very meaningful. Instead of saying, with all, you know, instead of mm -hmm. saying, I like pizza or I like something like right. that that they might not know about, I don't mm -hmm. know. Right. But, um, but they're using the content that is most appropriate for them, mm. that they can make those connections in their culture. Excellent. Hey, we're, we're going to yeah. dig deeper into this when we come back. Okay. Uh, Lori Phillips, Sam Nofziger, mm -hmm. uh, are here on Pacific Partnerships in Education, talking with me, your host, Ethan Allen. And we're going to take a brief break, and then we will be back in one minute. Great. Well, that's fun. We're rolling now. Think Tank Hawaii. That's Do you want to be cool? Like me? If so, watch my show on Tuesdays at 1 called Out of the Comfort Zone. I sang this song to you because I think you either are cool or have the potential to be seriously cool. And I want you to come watch my show where I bring in experts who talk all about easy strategies to be healthier, happier, build better relationships, and make your life a success. So come sit with the cool kids at Out of the Comfort Zone on Tuesdays at 1. See you there. Hello, I'm Yukari Kunisue. I'm your host of the new Japanese language show on Think Tech Hawaii called Konnichiwa Hawaii, broadcasting live every other Monday at 2 p.m. Please join us where we discuss important and useful information for the Japanese language community in Hawaii. The show will be all in Japanese. Hope you can join us every other Monday at 2 p.m. Aloha.
And you're back here in Pacific Partnerships in Education. I'm your host, Ethan Allen, here on Think Tech Hawaii. With me today in the Think Tech studios are Dr. Sam Nofziger and Dr. Lori Phillips. Uh, we're talking about English language learning, the challenges, the successes of programs, how to take successful programs such as Sam's been doing for, for Hispanic groups mm -hmm. in California mm -hmm. and work with them, mm -hmm. uh, work these same strategies into mm -hmm. Pacific Island groups who have very different languages and yes. all, but the issues are still the same. The kids yes. have got to learn the languages, yeah. right. they've, they've got to get mastery, they've got to get fluency yes. so they can read it, so they can write it, so they can speak it, so they can communicate effectively, they can communicate their understanding, as you were That's saying exactly earlier, right. right? So Ethan, one of the reasons that Sam is here with us, though, is because there's, there's sort of this idea that possibly all teachers can become English language teachers. Now, as an art teacher in a high school, that's the last thing I want to hear. As the PE teacher in a high school, that's definitely the last thing they want to hear. But with the strategies that Sam has and that are ELL strategy, exciting, more creative ways of doing it, you actually can teach language while you're teaching your subject. So I fought it for a while until I tried it and I realized that the knowledge of art, to get a kid to speak like an artist, to speak like an art historian, is really fun and that they have to have certain I learned today, things called academic language within art. Mm -hmm. So when I use the word value in art, I know right away I mean dark and light. Value mm. means dark and light. Mm. But if in any, any other subject, right. value in math like is math, different. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah, value in science, I don't know what it is. Right. <laughs> but, uh, but you know, we could take any, if I was a science, your science, right. I'm art, your language, mm -hmm. we could really play a game and say, if, if we wanted to teach, if I was a photo, teaching photosynthesis, what are the absolute academic words, science mm -hmm. words, that I would have to understand right. Right. to be able to talk, have children understand photosynthesis? Right. Once I know what those words are as the art teacher, mm -hmm. I'm good because now I can put in those words in the visual sense and I can put them in books. Mm -hmm. I can have kids write poetry about it. Mm -hmm. I can have them tell a story about it. Sure. But I'm not doing any good if I'm doing a picture of the pilgrim cover for their report. Right. That's right. not it. Right. It's how do we pull the academic language out of the image, mm -hmm. out of their environment, List it and explicitly teach vocabulary through yeah. it. Yeah, no, and yeah. it's exactly it. And a lot of the, the key ideas in science, they have mm. what are called cross cutting concepts. Right. And for instance, one of them is called it's size and scale. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Obviously important in art, right? right. How you Absolutely. size right. and how you scale. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. Systems and, and integration. Again, a, mm -hmm. a painting is done mm -hmm. as a system of parts, and uh, sure. a sculpture clue has right. a systems idea to it. You know? uh -huh. Yeah, I mean, these kind of ideas translate mm -hmm. across the disciplines. Yes. equally for a story, you right. know, for a piece of writing. But right? you, can you imagine what that means, though, to ELL teaching? Because right. from my understanding, I'm not the expert in it, there's kind of two ways to do it, if, you're, if I'm saying this. One is you can pull the kid out of the class and put him with everybody else that doesn't speak English. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or you can leave them in the class with the art teacher, with the science teacher. And the science teacher is just using these wonderful strategies mm -hmm. to bring out the language and it's not going to hurt the gifted kid. Right. It's not going to hurt the kid that just got off the airplane because in both ways they're using language to learn within the content. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Why, for instance, to take a science mm -hmm. example on the periodic table, right. why, why is the symbol for lead PB? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. PB is plumbic. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. oh. And the Romans used lead for making the original plumbing. Uh-huh. You know, yes. I mean, uh -huh. bing, right. bing, bing. You begin right. to tie all these things back together. Uh -huh. and you, you right. can tie it to your history. You can tie it right. to, yeah. Mm -hmm. right. so it's, and how all those elements are tied, they're on that table for a reason. Right. And their location right. is for a reason. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah. having yeah. those conversations about how this element relates to that element, right. There are words that go along with right, that. Right. This element has more electrons. This there it is. The words has, like more, the words has, like less, this, the more like elect, more elements, like these are lighter elements. Right. right. So you can't really talk about science without using those words. Exactly. And so when you identify what those mm. words are, right. then what we do with students is we say, okay, now we want you to explain the scientific notion that we're talking right. about. But while you're doing it, you must use these words right. and gives them an opportunity to practice using those words, maybe with a partner before mm. they do it out loud, or maybe in a group where mm -hmm. they kind of figure it out together. But the accountability, the academic language accountability is about 
you can't really explain the science without using the words. Right. Mm -hmm. So right. you've got to use the words in your explanation. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, there is that whole f sort of philosophical argument about yeah. you can't think without right. words, right? <laughs> right? That's exactly right. Uh, and it's the same. You, you've got it's to have very that much the same thing. In, in right. Your head to, right. Yeah. I oftentimes, um, when I talk with secondary teachers, mm. um, there are certain teachers that kind of are a little bit more open to the conversation than others, mm -hmm. but. Um, I'm a musician, uh -huh, okay. and I will tell you, there are words that I know as a musician that other people don't know, mm -hmm. and I better be using those words as I'm doing my music mm -hmm. and expressing how I do this music. Mm -hmm. Words like, you know, words like pianissimo, words like retard, words like piano. It's not the instrument; right, right. it mm -hmm. means something else. Right. You know, and so. As a musician, I have to be able to use those words to read them, understand them, and do what it says to do, but also turn to my friend and say, it says piano, play piano, mm -hmm. right? Which means soft, mm -hmm. right? And so in the context of music, mm -hmm. it means that, right? So the notion there is, is that we, we can't really, I can't really be a musician mm. without the language that is associated with that. Absolutely. I, I once, a uh, few months ago, I put my head in the middle of a high school football f huddle. And I've never yeah. played high school football. <laughs> uh, those guys were talking English, but I didn't really understand much of what they were right. saying. They have their own mm. code, it, their, right. their own, their own exactly language. Right. Yeah, yeah. It's exactly right. It's exactly right. And again, science does the same thing. Mm -hmm. you, look at, you look at a mm. thing and say, hey, it's a tree. Mm -hmm. but you know, what kind of tree That's is it? Right. You, know, right. um, you can talk about, well, it's a deciduous tree or an or evergreen tree. Exactly. Or, you know, yeah. da da da. And, and, you know, so the scientist has a lot, uh, as an expert, has a mm -hmm. lot deeper, f more fine grained knowledge yeah. of that and has to be able to communicate that with other scientists. That's what I oftentimes, that's what I oftentimes tell teachers and my friends who can really tell, you can turn on the television or listen, turn on the radio or turn on the internet and you can really tell who the expert is by how they can talk about yeah. their expertise. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. that's one way that they express their knowledge. Mm -hmm. Others do it through writing, right. but certainly you can really tell that's if someone knows. Yeah, it's a very hot mm -hmm. area of research now is, is to try to tease apart how is it that experts think about problems ah. versus novices approaching the same problem. Oh, okay. And experts, yes, rely on a much greater mm. uh, realm yeah. of knowledge, much deeper connections to more diverse things, yes. but, and they can build solutions more quickly. Typically. The other thing, though, that Sam has, has sort of pull, uh, explained is, is creating a safe space. So, mm -hmm. for example, the other day I was with a, a child, we take photographs and we label the photographs, and then a little girl found a, a apple that was half eaten in the, cur or, uh, in the curb area. Mm -hmm. She mm -hmm. took a picture of it and she held it up and she said, apple bone. <laughs> there we go. Uh, and I was not going to touch that with right. a 10-foot pole. That's mm -hmm. a much yeah. better word right. than, yeah. and right? Core. right mm -hmm. yeah. Apple yeah. core, uh -huh. right? Mm -hmm. So. You know, she's on her way to understanding. That's yeah. exactly um, right. And and so again, another one was this. Another little boy was pointing at the asphalt, taking pictures, and he said, "Little rocks." There were little tiny right. stones. Mm -hmm. right. mm -hmm. And somebody said, "Pebble." Mm -hmm. And then he immediately that was it, that he got it, and yeah. he used the word pebble. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. So it's it's we don't have to be smart. We just need to be developing. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. right. I mean, this gets back to your mm -hmm. your idea of, of the cognates and all, right. and mm -hmm. helping people make those connections mm -hmm. so they suddenly understand that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oftentimes, it's not the concept that we have to right. teach kids, because mm -hmm. a lot of our kids have a lot of those concepts sure. already. We just have to give them the academic label for that. Mm -hmm. Right. Exactly. And um, once we do that, and we ask them to practice it, it's great. Right. You know, Sam. So mm -hmm. you don't sound like a snob. Yes. Why don't you tell Ethan the story about, you know, that because we have pigeon here, right? Yes. So so you're not wanting us all to talk academically all of the time. Of course not. Of course not. Uh, a large part of our conversation about the notion of academic language is that, um, well, I'll just kind of use this example. Um, when I was a teenager, I would go to my father and I would talk to him. I'd start a conversation with him. And he would turn to me pretty quickly sometimes and say, you don't talk to me like that. Mm. In other words, I was talking to him as though I was talking to my friends. Uh, mm. okay. And he taught me, basically, I'm your father, 
you don't talk to me like right, that. Right. And I think it's that notion that we have to help kids understand that the way I talk to my father is one way, the way I talk to my friends is another. One is not better or worse right, than right. the other, there's, it's just different. Right, there's the way you talk mm, in correct. school. Correct, correct. Mm -hmm. And I have right. to be able to turn it on when I need to turn it right. on and turn it off when I need to turn it off. Right, mm -hmm. and because so much success in so many different levels, so, so much, so many opening of options depends yeah. on a good mm. grasp of English in this yes. in our mm. current world. It's right. really important that we help kids make those transitions, yeah. right? Be able to take their perfectly good understandings uh -huh. of their own languages mm. and express them in English. And they yeah. have to have those tools. And they have to have exactly. those tools available to them so that they can use them when it's the appropriate time. But again, I, I think what's most important is when I, we don't change the apple bone. No. Right. So in the arts, in the storytelling, on the on the classroom, we, it's great. I can imagine saying to a child, I want you to explain to your friend in pigeon photosynthesis. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How would that be any less huh. less valuable? It's not. Or more about, you know, that, more that might, it's not. It might be yeah. more comprehensible to the other right. kid. Oh, it's just that, that the it. kid now is able right. to go right. from right. academic to, to right. pigeon to uh -huh. classroom. And, and, that, okay. and that kind of mental flexibility That's exactly is, right. is powerful. That, that has been shown that to be, right. is, the, the evidence shows that bilingual yeah. kids mm -hmm. are better bilingual. Better problem solvers, right. better, mm -hmm. they have different, right. they can put themselves in other perspectives. The, 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 as they get older, they Absolutely. are much less likely to uh, mm -hmm. end up with dementia. You That's know, right, they, all better things. to maintain mm -hmm. cognizance. Uh -huh. All in all, it's just, it's, a, it's an amazing array mm -hmm. of, of good stuff, and it, it, it points nice. how powerful this is, these connections between mm -hmm. the language, the art, the science, and, and the culture. And the culture. Right. And, yeah. got, got to I do was it. telling Sam that there, there was a, a story not too long ago. I don't know if you remember. He was at Prell, and he was one of the directors of education, Rod. And he came to us and he said, I'm going to give you a word. I can't remember, like uplong or something, some Ponapayan word. Mm -hmm. And he said, Do you, Can you read that? And we all read it. And he said, Do you think you understand? No. You know, Let me, can you spell it? And we spelled it. Do you understand now? No. Let me give you the definition. It means shampoo your hair. <laughs> And we said, okay, all right, shampoo. And he said, now do you understand? I said, yeah, I know the definition. I can spell it. I can read it. And he said, not really, because this certain word only means shampoo your hair on Tuesday if you're pregnant and you, you know, in a certain river in Pompeii, right? So until you've experienced yeah. that culture, it's, right. you really the cannot yeah. understand right. you cannot the understand. deep meaning yep. of things yeah. until you've been yeah. among uh -huh. That's and great. around. That's exactly and, right. It, it's great that we have educators like you both uh, work, mm -hmm. working with our kids here because it's so important. Lori Phillips, Sam Lofziger, mm -hmm. thank you so much for joining me here Thanks for on having the show us. today. It was wonderful. I learned a lot. Yeah. And I hope you'll come back and join us in two weeks for the next episode of Part Pacific Partnerships in Education. Until okay. then.